welcome to today's lesson students so in the previous chapter you all can remember we discussed what heat is heat is a type of energy it is a thermal energy or kinetic energy due to the kinetic energy of the molecules there is heat in substances and that can be measured by the temperature using thermometers so temperature is the measure of heat energy and then we understood how heat transfer occurs from one substance to another substance it flows from high temperature to low temperature so in today's lesson i'm going to discuss about heat capacity of an object now to understand this heat capacity students you all have come across these examples in your day to day life also say you have a, a metal lid a lid of a metal box a metal lid and say a plastic lid and a piece of wood if all these are kept in the same place where there is direct sunlight after say about an hour or two what do you think will happen will you be able to touch the metal lid with your bare hands no it will be hot whereas the plastic you may be able to take it and wood it's easy to pick it up so that is because their nature the ability of those materials to absorb heat is different that is where we need to understand heat capacity of an object the capacity of an object to become hot or become heated up that is what we are trying to explain here so to do that we will do an activity activity investigate what happens when heat is supplied to liquids so the example i told you all it's about solids but liquids gases anything can become hot so here we are going to understand how liquids become hot or what happens to liquids when we provide heat to do this activity we have all these materials here we have beakers we will be needing three beakers because into two beakers we will take water of different volumes and into one beaker we will take coconut oil so we need water then we need coconut oil it can be any other oil also but here we will be using coconut oil because that's the common oil that is easily available to us then we need the thermometer thermometer so that we get the temperature readings and you all know for these types of activities we need the stir so these are the materials that we need we need the beakers water coconut oil thermometer and stir a very simple activity i will explain the procedure to you all so the method here you can look at the diagram now here what you need to do is you need to have three bunsen burners with similar flame or else you can use candle flame so here you can use the bunsen burner bunsen burner or you can use candle flame you all know the different students normally bunsen burner the heat that is produced is greater so within a few minutes the liquids will become hot but if you use candle flame it will take a little longer time so either one is fine even if it is candle flame you will need three flames you need to have three similar candles and do the activity simultaneously but if you don't have that facility we can repeat the procedure one after the other but doing it at the same time is more better so this is what we will be doing we need to have a beaker and the beakers also have to be identical so that the material of the beaker or the size of the beaker beaker doesn't give any have any effect on the observation so in one beaker we take water let's say about 40 cm cube of water and into the next one again we take 40 cm cube of coconut oil and into the third beaker we take double the volume of water so if you take 40 here we will need to take 80 cm cubes of 
water there. The volume doesn't matter. If you take 50 centimeter cube of water and coconut oil, you need to take 100 centimeter cubes of water in the third beaker. That's the difference. So equal volume of water and coconut oil, then double the volume of the first amount of water. That is what you need to take. And then this is what you do. You arrange them one uh, next to each other, not too close. You need to have certain amount of space. It's all there with the same environment. Uh, all the conditions are same. And then you make sure that the flames are also lit in a similar manner. And into all three beakers, you need to have the thermometer. So if you are doing all three simultaneously, there need to be three people to observe the temperature reading. So because of that students, when I'll be doing in the lab, it's only me who is going to do the practical. So it will be one after the other. So this is the procedure. Obtain three identical beakers. So this I told you all. So that the way the beaker absorbs heat doesn't affect the observation. And pour a measured volume of water into one of them. So here I'm taking 40 centimeter cube. Pour an equal volume of coconut oil into another beaker. Pour water with a volume equal to twice the initial volume into the third beaker. So we have done that. Then measure the temperatures of the liquids in all three beakers. So this is going to be the initial temperature. Initial temperature. I'll be using the simple T for initial temperature. Now place all three beakers on three identical stands and heat them up for an equal time interval about five minutes using three identical candles. So in your textbook also they have shown the Bunsen burner but in the procedure they have mentioned candles. So as I told you before you can use either one of them. So if it's candle flame you need to do it for about five minutes but if it's the Bunsen burner maybe two to three minutes would be sufficient. At the end of the time interval, measure the temperatures of the liquid. So do you all know what you have to do? It's a very simple activity. But what I will be doing is I will be taking the liquid separately. So initially I have the Bunsen burner with 40 centimeter cube of water inside the beaker. I'll take the initial temperature and I will record the temperature readings at one minute intervals. Likewise, I will repeat the activity for 40 centimeter cube of coconut oil and then with 80 centimeter cube of water. So as I told you, since I am going to do it by myself, I will be repeating the procedure. But as you know students, when we repeat it one after the other, obviously there can be slight practical errors or differences can be there. That is why they tell you to do it simultaneously. So I am sure you have understood the activity clearly. So then we will go to the lab and do the activity. Okay students. So now we are going to do this activity in order to understand the heat capacity of different substances. So to understand that I have three different beakers. In this first one I have 40 centimeter cubes of water and in the second one I have 40 centimeter cubes of coconut oil. So they have the same volume but different materials. And in the third one, I have water again. So the first and second beakers have the same material, but they have different volumes. The first one is 40 centimeter cubes and the second beaker with water contains 80 centimeter cubes of water. So double the volume. This is what we are going to do. Now I have already set the stand with the thermometer so that we can easily read the temperature when we heat the liquid. So first I will be placing the water on this uh, stand and then with the Bunsen burner you all can also use a candle and normally when we do this activity it would be more better you will get better results if you can have three Bunsen burners or three candles identical candles burning at the same time so that you provide the same circumstances for all the three activities but here I am going to do it 
one after the other. But the thing is, we will use the same time interval. So if I take, let's say, five minutes to heat the 40 centimeter cubes of water, we will need to take the initial temperature and the final temperature. The same way with coconut oil and 80 centimeter cubes of water. So let's start the activity now. Okay, students. So I have placed the beaker containing 40 centimeter cubes of water. Can you all read the temperature there? The initial temperature? It's 23 degrees Celsius. So that is the initial temperature of water. So while I start the burner, I will also start the stopwatch. So we will observe after each minute, we will see how the temperature changes. Like that, we will try to do it for at least three to five minutes. So students, while I place the beaker over the Bunsen burner, I will start the stopwatch. So you all know normally in school we do it as a group. So one person can place the beaker there. At the same time you all can start the stopwatch. And also as you do that you have to also place the thermometer into the water. So here I am going to move it somewhere close. At the same time I am starting the stopwatch. We will have to time it and observe the temperature every one minute. So can you all see initially the room temperature, it was 23 degrees Celsius. So I have a place to mark the values as well. 23 degrees was the initial temperature. Now you can see the thermometer reading students, it's about 34 degrees Celsius. Can you all see? So that's after one minute, it is 34 degrees Celsius. So we will leave it for another minute and see how the temperature increases. You can see it's one and a half minutes now. We have another 15 seconds to get to two minutes. You all can look at the thermometer students. It's about 43 degrees Celsius now. So at the end of two minutes, it is 44 degrees Celsius. So I'm recording the temperatures here. We will leave it for another one minute. Still you can see the temperature reading increasing after another five seconds time we will read the temperature again now you can see at the end of three minutes the temperature is about 55 degrees celsius so here that is 55 degrees celsius so with that, I will stop the activity with 40 centimeter cubes of water. We will repeat the same thing with 40 centimeter cubes of oil now. Okay, students. So now the second one, that is the coconut oil, 40 centimeter cubes of coconut oil. I will get the temperature reading first. So here you can observe the initial reading. Can you all see the reading, students? it's 24 degrees Celsius. So then as we did before, we will place it on the stand and while I bring it to the flame, I will on the stopwatch so we can time it. So initially, I will have to place the thermometer as well. So here students, since we have different values for the initial temperature, we will see how the temperature increased with time. Then you can compare the heat capacities of the liquids. So we have in another 10 seconds students, we will have to get the temperature reading. You can see it's rising faster than before. Now it's more, almost one minute, you can see the temperature reading, it's about 47 degrees Celsius. So I will note. 
So you can see here the values are different. So we'll have to wait for another one minute. Now at the end of the two minutes, you can see the temperature reading is 66 degrees Celsius. So in another five seconds, we need to observe. So your after three minutes students, you can see the temperature reading is about 79 degrees Celsius. So now can you all compare and see how the values have changed. I will remove the thermometer and also take the oil away from the burner. So from the readings, can you all see students, the readings here, we took equal volumes of water and oil. You can see compared to water, the oil became hot, the temperature increased faster. So that means the heat capacity of oil is less compared to water. That is why it becomes hot faster. Then what are we going to compare? We are going to use the same liquid water but with different volumes. Uh, so now students, we are going to use water two different volumes. So the same liquid, when the volumes are different, we'll see how the heat capacity affects the increase in temperature. So as I did before, first we need to take the initial temperature. So to do that, I will hold the beaker with water and I make sure that the thermometer does not touch the beaker. You have to immerse the thermometer in completely and get the reading. Uh, can you all see the temperature reading students? The initial temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. So like before, we have the same initial temperature, 23 degrees Celsius. So now as I place the beaker over the Bunsen frame, again I will start the stopwatch and also there's immediately I will insert the thermometer in. So here you can see And we will place the thermometer. So after one minute, we will get the temperature reading. So now students, you can see the temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. So after one minute, only a small increase can be seen. We'll wait for another one minute. In another five seconds, we will get the second reading. You can see students, it's 29 degrees Celsius. So after two minutes, it's 29 degrees Celsius. We'll wait for another one minute. Again in another few seconds. Okay, so this is after three minutes. You can see the temperature has risen to 34 degrees Celsius. So with that, we have got all the readings. Now I will remove the thermometer. And also we can off the burner. Okay, students. So did you all get the proper observation of this activity? We use 40 centimeter cubes or 40 milliliters of water, then 40 milliliters of oil and again 80 milliliters of water, 80 milliliters or 80 centimeter cubes. So initially the initial temperature of water was 23 degrees and then you can see when we heated the water after every minute we were able to observe the temperature rise and the maximum temperature was 55 degrees Celsius after three minutes. Compare that with the value of oil that is for 40 centimeter cubes of oil. If we calculate the difference here it is from 23 degrees, this became 55 degrees Celsius. So the difference was 32 degrees Celsius. 
within 3 minutes. If you look at the oil, you can see it went up to 79 degrees Celsius but started with 24 degrees Celsius. So, there was a difference of 55 degrees Celsius within 3 minutes. And the last one, we had double the volume of water. So, there you can remember the initial temperature 23 degrees Celsius. It only went up to 34 degrees Celsius. So, the change was observed as only 11 degrees Celsius. So, these are the values that you need to understand. Compare the same volume of water and oil. Oil became hotter more quickly. Within the 3 minutes, the temperature increased more. So, that means the heat capacity of oil is less. So, that is why it becomes hot faster. Whereas, the heat capacity of water is compared to oil, it is higher. So, that's why the temperature increase is less. It's only 32 degrees Celsius. But when you compare the two different volumes, when we took double the volume of water, the increase in temperature was less. So, that is what we need to understand here. So, students, if we had had three Bunsen burners simultaneously, you would have got better exact results. But here we saw that there was a slight difference in the initial temperature of coconut oil. But still we were able to get the difference in temperature after heating for 3 minutes. So, from that, you all can understand the difference between the heat capacity of different liquids and how the volume affects the change in temperature. Okay, students. So, you all observe what happened when we provided same amount of heat or similar amount of heat to the liquids in the three instances. Initially 40 centimeter cube of water, then 40 centimeter cube of coconut oil and 80 centimeter cube of water. So, this is how I got the temperature reading. So, I will fill up the table here. So, 40 centimeter cube of water, the initial temperature was 23 degrees Celsius. Then we had 34 degrees Celsius, 44 degrees Celsius after 2 minutes and 55 degrees Celsius. So, all these I am recording the value in degrees Celsius. So, when we used 40 centimeter cube of oil, the initial temperature was 24 degrees Celsius. So, this is what I told you all students. If we did all the activities simultaneously, you would have got the same initial temperature. But because I did it separately, we got different values for initial temperature. But that is not going to affect this activity because we are not going to do any calculations. We are just trying to understand what happens when we provide heat to different liquids. So, then the temperature became 47 degrees Celsius and 66 degrees Celsius after 2 minutes and 79 degrees Celsius after 3 minutes. The same way, when we used 80 centimeter cubes of water, again the temperature was 23 degrees Celsius. After 1 minute, it was 26 degrees Celsius. After 2 minutes, 29 degrees Celsius. And after 3 minutes, it was 34 degrees Celsius. So, these were the observations that we got from the activity. So, from all these students, irrespective of the difference in the initial temperature, we can assume that they were same because it's not a big difference. As I said again, because it's not a quantitative activity. We are not going to do any calculations. So, we will consider the first two liquids, water and oil. The volume is the same. Both were 40 centimeter cube volume. So, then the difference is only the nature of substance. One is water, the other one is coconut oil. So, what happened there? You can see after 3 minutes, the initial temperature was 23, the final temperature was 55 and it took some time for the temperature to rise and there was only 32 degrees Celsius difference. So, here if we just calculate the difference, 32 degrees Celsius, it increased by 32 degrees Celsius. If we look at the change that happened with coconut oil, 
what can you see here from 24 47 66 79 easily you can understand the heating took place fast and you can see there was a difference of about 55 degrees celsius so here the difference became 55 degrees celsius same volume same time interval different liquids so what can you confirm from this you can increase the temperature of coconut oil faster you all can understand that no compared to water so there are the ability of different substances to become hot or to increase in temperature by absorbing heat depends on the nature of the substance that is one conclusion we can get from this observation so i will write that first so one conclusion we can say when equal amount of heat heat is supplied to equal volume of different liquids the rise or increase in temperature depends on on the nature of the liquid so that is one conclusion so the nature of liquid or the substance is specific so the way it absorbs heat varies so then we took 40 centimeter cubes of water in the first activity and 80 centimeter cube of water in the second activity there the material is the same so they need to absorb heat in a similar manner but what happened we used different volumes so you can see the initial temperature was the same 23 degrees celsius but if you compare the increase in temperature when we use double the volume you can see there there was only an increase of 11 degrees celsius at the end of three minutes so from that what can you say when we have more volume of the same substance the amount of heat that absorb that is absorbed so here the amount of heat is also the same we assume it's the same type of flame so the same amount of heat but the increase in temperature will depend on the volume when the volume is less the increase in temperature is high and when the volume is higher the increase in temperature is lesser is that clear to you all so as i told you all before students we are not doing a quantitative calculation here we are just trying to understand what happens so the amount of heat that can be absorbed by the same substance depends on the volume of the substance so that is why the temperature change varies so that is the second conclusion that we can get from this activity so here we can say when equal amount of heat of heat is supplied to different volumes of the same liquid the increase in temperature
is different. So from these two, what can we finally conclude? We can say even though the same amount of heat is applied to different objects, the change in temperature or rise in temperature depends on the nature of the liquid as well as the volume of the liquid. When we say volume, we can also relate it to the mass of the liquid because you know water, the density is the same. So when we use different volumes, that means we use different mass of the liquid. So can you all understand that students? So that is the final conclusion. So from this, we can say when equal amount of of heat is supplied the increase in temperature depends on the nature of the liquid or you can say substance. Here we use liquids but it can be any substance, liquid, solids or even gases. Nature of the liquid and mass. Again within brackets here I will write it as volume because we used different volumes of water. So is that clear to you all students? So from all these students we can come to this conclusion when equal amount of heat is supplied to equal volume of different liquids the rise or increase in temperature depends on the nature of the liquid. So that is what we observe with water and oil. Then there is the other one, the second conclusion, when, so we have the second conclusion there, when equal amount of heat is supplied to different volumes, so here it has to be different volumes of the same liquid, the increase in the temperature is different. So that is what we observe when we use 40 centimeter cube of water and 80 centimeter cube of water. They are also the increase was different. So from those two, so from those two observations and the conclusions, we can finally conclude and say when equal amount of heat is supplied, the increase in temperature depends on the nature of the liquid and the mass of the substance. So nature of the substance as well as the mass of the substance. So this is where we discuss the property or quantity heat capacity. When we supply the same amount of heat for the same amount of time period, depending on the nature of the substance and the mass, the increase in temperature will differ. So that is because different substances have heat capacities. So that is what we are going to discuss now. So then I will move on to the next slide. Even though there could be minor differences in the candles, we could assume that approximately the same amount of heat was supplied to each of the three beakers. So that is what I said before also. Although I repeated the activity one after the other, still we can assume that we were able to provide same amount of heat because almost all the environment conditions were similar. So similar amount of heat or same amount of heat. However, you will observe that the temperature rise in the three beakers are different. That's the important thing. The temperature rise are different. When the same amount of heat is supplied to different quantities of the same substance, so that is what I said, either volume or mass, different quantities of the same substance or the same quantities of different substances. Their temperatures rise in different amounts. So this was the conclusion that we were able to obtain from the activity.
that is what you need to understand since the temperature rise in the three beakers of the above activity were not equal so this is important because they were not equal although the same amount of heat was supplied temperature rise was not equal but the amount of heat was the same so same amount of heat was supplied to all three beakers we can conclude that the heat capacities of the substances in the three beakers are different so here we say heat capacities the ability of the substance to increase in temperature when provided with heat energy that is what we consider as heat capacity so the heat capacity depends on the mass as well as the nature of substance is that clear to you so with that i will move on to the next slide so we define heat capacity that is the amount of heat that is needed to be supplied to a certain material or substance in order to increase its temperature by 1 degrees is known as the heat capacity so we will define that first the amount of heat of heat that needs to be to be supplied in order to increase the temperature of a substance by one unit here i will write it as one unit so that can mean either 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin but already you all know degree celsius and kelvin when it comes to difference it's the same magnitude so by one unit is the heat capacity or is known as heat capacity is that okay students so the amount of heat that needs to be supplied in order to increase the temperature of a substance by one unit is known as heat capacity so this heat capacity is given different units and you all know when it comes to energy joules is the standard unit temperature kelvin is the standard unit so because of that if we write the international unit for measuring heat capacity it is joules per kelvin you all know students when you write joules kelvins both are from derived from the names of different scientists so we have to use capital letters and we need to have a space between the two units so joules per kelvin at the same time heat capacity can also be expressed in joules per degrees celsius so that also can be used joules per degrees celsius again capital j letters so then if we look at the heat capacity of an object it depends on two factors what are the factors the nature of the material or nature of substance as well as the mass of the substance so the heat capacity of an object depends on the nature of the substance nature of the substance and mass of the substance you can also just write as mass mass of substance so two objects made from the same substance but with different masses have different heat capacity that we observed in the activity water is made up of the same substance but it had different volume so that means it had different masses so the way the temperature rise was different 
So because of that is because they have different heat capacities. So here two objects made from the same substance but with different masses have different heat capacities. That is one. Even though the masses are the same. So if you take same masses, two objects made from different substances can have different heat capacities. So is that clear students? So nature of the substance and the mass of the substance. So the heat capacity of the substance is indicated by the symbol capital C. So here the symbol is capital C. When we say heat capacity capital C. So if we say heat capacity capital C is equal to 300 joules per Kelvin. So if you have a certain material irrespective of its mass, if you need to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius, you need to provide 300 joules of heat energy. So if you want to increase the temperature by 2 degrees Celsius, you need to provide 600 joules of heat. 10 degrees Celsius, you need to provide 3000. So there it is a multiplication of the heat energy by the increase in temperature because here it is the amount of heat that you need to supply in order to increase the temperature by one unit only. So that is why the units are joules per degree Celsius or joules per Kelvin. Is that clear to you all students? So that is one property related to heat, the ability of substances to absorb heat and increase in temperature. Now we'll, we will move on to another topic that is specific heat capacity. Now when we said heat capacity, we use water. We use 40 centimeter cube of water or we heat, heat 80 centimeter cubes of water. There can be one liter of water or an ocean full of water. So there are, depending on the mass of water, the way the temperature increases will vary. So because of that, when we define heat capacity, there we don't consider the mass. So it's very difficult to compare. So there, sometimes when we use a small volume of water, we need to supply only a small amount of heat in order to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. But when we use a larger volume, larger mass, we will need to provide more heat. So it's very difficult to compare the values because although it's the same substance, they will have different values for heat capacity. So therefore, in order to make it easy for us to compare as well as to study and understand the nature of materials when related to heat capacity, we define the term specific heat capacity. So this is the amount of heat that needs to be supplied to one kilogram, a unit mass of a substance to increase its temperature again by a unit uh, increase in temperature by a degree Celsius or Kelvin by a unit increase in temperature. Is that clear to you all students? So then it can be experimentally shown that the heat capacity of different masses of the same substance is proportional to the mass. That is something you need to understand. It is proportional to the mass. So if you use one kilogram of water, you might need to supply x joules of heat in order to increase the temperature by one degrees. Instead, if you have two kilograms of water, you will need to supply double the amount of heat. Three kilograms of water, three times the heat. So there, the amount of heat that you need to supply is proportional to the mass. Is that clear to you? So for example, if we write that down, if we say for one kilogram of water, if you need to supply x joules of heat, then for 2 kilogram of water, all these to give an increase of increase of 1 degree Celsius. 
So here you will need to supply 2x joules of heat. If it is going to be 3 kilograms of water, then you need to supply 3x amount of heat. So there you can see the amount of heat that needs to be supplied is proportional to the mass. So that is what is explained to you. Amount of heat needed to increase the temperature by one unit is proportional to mass. So what will happen if you divide that heat by mass? So here you can see 1 kilogram of water x, x divided by 1. You have 2 kilogram of water 2x. So 2x divided by 2 again it's x and 3 kilogram 3x. So 3x by 3 again you get x. So you end up with the same value. That is what we call as specific heat capacity. So the amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature by one unit of one kilogram or a unit mass of a substance is known as its specific heat capacity. So we will define that. So here you can see however the heat capacity of a unit mass of a given substance or the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a unit mass of the substance by one degree is a property that depends on the substance. So that is only depending on the nature of the substance. Is that clear to you? That is why we need to define specific heat capacity. So there since we fix the mass to a unit mass, the effect of mass is not there. Earlier we discussed heat capacity depends on nature of substance and the mass of substance. But here since we are going to calculate it for unit mass, it will only depend on the nature of the substance. So if I read that again, it can be experimentally shown that the heat capacity of different masses of the same substance is proportional to the mass. That is what is explained here. So this means that the heat capacity doubles when the mass is double. That is what I showed you all here. So if I again show that to you. So here you can see 1 kilogram of water, x joules of heat. 2 kilogram of water, it's 2 x joules of heat and 3 kilogram of water, 3 x joules of heat. So from that we can confirm that the increase in temperature is proportional to mass. So if you try to calculate it for unit mass, you end up with the same value and that will only depend on the nature of the substance. So here you can see however the heat capacity of a unit mass of a given substance or the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degrees is a property that depends on the substance and that is what we call as specific heat capacity and if we define that the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by one unit is known as the specific heat capacity. So is that clear to all students? 
So you increase the temperature by one unit and that is for one unit of mass. So if you write the units heat is in joules, you need to supply the heat to increase the temperature of a unit mass. So that is kilogram minus one and because it is by a unit increase in temperature per Kelvin or else we can write it as joule per kilogram per degrees Celsius. So again you all know students Kelvin and degree Celsius when it comes to difference it's the same magnitude. So that is what we give as the unit and the symbol here is simple C. Earlier for heat capacity we use capital C but here it is simple C that is specific heat capacity. Is that okay? So you all have to remember the definition for specific heat capacity. The amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a unit mass or you can say one kilogram mass of a unit mass of a substance by one unit is known as the specific heat capacity. Is that clear to you all? So this is what you need to understand for different materials. With that, I will move on to the next slide. Since the specific heat capacity is the amount of heat that should be supplied to increase the temperature of a unit mass of a given substance by one degree, it can also be described as the heat capacity of a unit mass. So that is what I explained before. One kilogram x, two kilogram 2x. So if x is the specific heat capacity, the heat capacity of a unit mass, if you divide x by the amount of mass, so 2x divided by 2, that will give you the specific heat capacity. So therefore, we can write a relationship between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. So heat capacity equals mass into specific heat capacity that is capital C equals m into simple c. So specific heat capacity you all know is the simple c and heat capacity is capital C. So heat capacity equals mass into specific heat capacity. Even the units when you write and compare you will get the same values. By heat capacity is joules per Kelvin. Whereas mass is going to be in kilograms and this is going to be in joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So the kilogram minus 1 and kilogram will get cancelled off. So you will get the unit as joules per kilogram. Is that clear to you also? So this is the relationship. So units of specific heat capacity is joule per kilogram per Kelvin or joule per kilogram per degrees Celsius. And the specific heat capacity of the substance is indicated by the symbol, simple C. So if we write an example, now simple C of water, that is specific heat capacity of water. If you can remember students, we have come across this value before also, it is 4200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. We have discussed this when we discussed special properties of water as well as when we calculated the heat changes re related to chemical reactions. So 4200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. That is to increase the temperature of 1 kilogram of water by 1 degrees Celsius. To do that, you need to supply 4200 joules of heat. So to do that, you need to give 4200 joules of heat. 
So what if you need to increase the temperature of 2 kilograms of water? Of water by 1, one degree Celsius. Then what do you need to do? You need to multiply it by 2. 2 into 4200 joules. That will be 8400 joules. That is the relationship we discussed there. So, specific heat capacity into mass will give you the heat capacity of water. Can you see that here? And also you can see heat capacity changes with the amount of substance or the mass of substance. So here since we are only multiplying it by the mass you will have the unit per Kelvin, joule per Kelvin that is the heat capacity of water. Is that clear to you all students? So specific heat capacity is to increase the temperature by one unit of one kilogram of a substance. This is common for all solids, liquids as well as gases. But mostly we discuss it for solids and liquids. So now we will look at some values of specific heat capacities. So specific heat capacities of some substances are given in the table below. First we will take this first table. The substance is given to you, specific heat capacity. You can see the unit students joules per kilogram per Kelvin and in the second table also there are more substances and the specific heat capacity values are given to you. So here you all have to remember you don't have to memorize any of these values but for water you are familiar with that because we have been using that value again and again. But the others you need to understand the nature of specific heat capacity. Now let's take this water and ice. They are both made up of the same constituent molecules, H2O molecules. But because ice is in the solid form, water is in the liquid form, can you all see the difference? For water, we need to supply 4200 joules in order to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin of 1 kilogram of water. But if you take 1 kilogram of ice, if you supply 2100 joules itself, the temperature will increase by 1 degree Celsius. So can you all understand the difference? It is specific to the different substance. So when we say that not only the constituent molecules, the physical state as well. So those both of these have H2O molecules, but their physical states are different. So because of that, they are different substances. Then if we take kerosene oil, 2140 joules, coconut oil, 2200 joules, alcohol, 2500 joules and rubber, 1700, aluminium, 900. Out of all these, if you look at the values, what has the higher specific heat capacity? You can see it is water. So water has high specific heat capacity. The value is 4200 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. That is why this acts as a very good coolant. You can remember that. So this acts as a good coolant or coolant property of water depends on the specific heat capacity. But if you compare the other liquids, kerosene oil, coconut oil, alcohol, they become hot very quickly. The same goes for ice, they can be heated up quickly. Then you take aluminium, has a very low value from this table. Now let's look at the second table. Concrete, it has Specific heat capacity of 3000 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Iron 460. Asbestos, the asbestos sheet, that's 820 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Copper 400, zinc 380, mercury 140 and lead 130. Can you all see a pattern there? 
aluminium, iron, copper, zinc, mercury, lead, all are metals and they have comparatively less or low values for specific heat capacity. That is why metals absorb heat very quickly. The increase in temperature for metals is very quick and that is why we use mercury in thermometers as well. Is that clear to you? So that is another thing that you can understand from here. Metals have metals have comparatively low specific heat capacities. But when we take rubber, that also can become hot somewhat faster compared to ice and water, it has a low specific heat capacity. But take concrete, that also has a somewhat high value, but compared to water, concrete becomes hot faster. So if you are given values, as I told you, you don't have to memorize any of these values. But if you are given values or the given the different materials, you should be able to compare and understand which substance will become fa hot faster or which substance will show an increase, higher increase in temperature when you supply the same amount of heat to the same mass of different substances. That is what you need to understand here. So if you take one kilogram of all these substances and provide the same amount of heat, water will take a longer time to increase or reach a certain temperature or the increase in temperature will be very less when it comes to water because the specific heat capacity is very high. Whereas if you look at all the values, lead has the lower specific heat capacity. If you provide the same amount of heat to 1 kilogram of lead, the increase in temperature will be very high or else you can say it becomes hot very fast. That is the concept that we are trying to understand here. Is that clear to you all students? So with that, I will move on to the next slide. So then we will see how we can find the quantity of heat. So finding the quantity of heat, we have already done this also students. You all can remember the activity we did in the previous lesson. A reaction of acid with a base, we calculated the quantity of heat that was evolved during the chemical reaction. But that also we have used the same equation. But now we will try to understand how we come up with that equation or how that equation is used to calculate heat. When a substance absorbs or releases heat, its temperature changes. So if the substance absorbs heat, the temperature will increase and if the substance releases heat, the temperature will decrease. In order to find the quantity of heat flow, the following relation can be established. So this is from the specific heat capacity of a substance. So we take the specific heat capacity, heat capacity of a substance is equal to C. What is the meaning of that? If we need to increase, so let's say we need to supply or we can say amount of heat of heat required to increase the temperature of 1 kilogram of a substance by 1 degree Celsius is equal to C. That is what we understand from specific heat capacity. So, 
if the heat that is needed to amount of heat heat required to increase the temperature of m kilogram of a substance by 1 degree celsius what is that going to be if it is 1 kilogram of substance increasing by 1 degree celsius the heat that is needed to be provided is c so if it has to be m kilograms we need to multiply that by m that we have already discussed the heat capacity so this is going to be m into c so here the increase in temperature is just 1 degree celsius if we want to increase the temperature by theta then what do we need to do we need to multiply this by theta so that is the next step amount of heat heat required to increase the temperature of m kilogram of a substance by theta degree celsius that will be equal to mass into specific heat capacity that is the amount of heat needed to increase the temperature by 1 degree celsius so for theta degree celsius we need to multiply that by theta so this is the relationship that you need to understand so the heat that is required heat required that is equal to you can say quantity of heat of heat if that is taken as q what is the relationship you can remember q equals m c theta quantity of heat that is that needs to be supplied to m mass of a substance to increase the temperature by theta degree celsius will be given by m c theta if we write that in words quantity of heat of heat equals mass into specific heat capacity into change in temperature so how do we get the units if i rewrite the equation q equals m c theta what is m that is going to be in kilograms and c joules per kilogram per kelvin and theta you all know is going to be in kelvins or degree celsius so here again this particular unit you can have it in kelvins or degree celsius so if you have kelvin here you can you have to have kelvin there if you have degree celsius here that has to be degree celsius but you all already know students when it comes to difference it's the same magnitude so when you simplify this equation you will get the unit joules for the heat or quantity of heat that needs to be supplied so here q is quantity of heat m is mass 
and simple C is specific heat capacity and the change in temperature is theta. Is that clear to you all? So by using this equation, we can calculate the amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature of a certain amount of substance. Is that clear to you all? So then I will discuss some examples. Before I do that, I will again go back to the slide just to revise what we discussed. So we take specific heat capacity of a substance as simple C. So that means the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of 1 kilogram of a substance by 1 degree Celsius is C. That is the heat that need, we need to provide. So amount of heat required to increase the temperature of m kilogram of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. So since it's 1 kilogram it's C, m kilogram you multiply by m, m into C. Then if we calculate the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of m kilogram of a substance by theta degree Celsius, you need to multiply mass into specific heat capacity into theta, that is the change in temperature. So therefore, if we give the heat required or quantity of heat that is given the symbol Q, you get the equation Q equals mc theta. And in this, you can see Q is the quantity of heat, m is mass, c is specific heat capacity and theta is the change in temperature. I am sure you all have understood this relationship or the equation. So we will do some examples. This means that the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a given mass of a substance by a certain amount is equal to the product between the increase in temperature and the heat capacity by m into simple c that is specific heat capacity is equal to heat capacity. So there we can rewrite the equation as q into c theta also. Why? C is equal to because C equals M into simple C. Heat capacity equals mass into specific heat capacity. But we usually use this equation. Q equals MC theta. That is more convenient. Because we can use different masses. We can discuss for different temperatures. So, only the specific heat capacity that is specific for a particular substance. So, then in terms of magnitude, 1 Kelvin and 1 degree of Celsius are the same. All what we have discussed. Therefore, when we consider a temperature change, we can specify it in Celsius instead of using Kelvin without making any change in the value. So, even if you have the specific heat capacity in Kelvins, and temperature change in degree Celsius, it won't make a difference. But to have a uniformity in calculation, it's better to write the same units. So then when the units cancel off and you get the final unit as joules, you know that you have done the calculation properly. Is that clear to you all students? So with that, I will move on to the first example. Let us find the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of 6 kilogram of copper. So the material is copper, the mass is 6 kilograms and the theta copper by 20 Kelvin. So the theta is 20 Kelvin and the specific heat capacity of copper is given to you as 400 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So we need to use all these values to do the calculation. So what can you do? You can directly use the equation Q equals mc theta. So here you need to substitute the values there. What is mass? 6 kilogram and specific heat capacity is given to you 400 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Even if it was in degree Celsius that is also fine. But here the temperature change is given in Kelvin, 20 Kelvin. So it's easier, both the units are the same. 
So you can simplify easily also. Kelvin minus 1 and Kelvin can be cancelled off. Kilogram and kilogram minus 1 can be cancelled off. So when you simplify 6 into 400 into 20. So that will be in joules. What is the value there? When we multiply this, it's going to be 48,000 joules. 6 into 4 into 2, 48, so 48,000 joules. You can also write it as kilojoules. 48,000 joules, you all know, 1,000 joules is equal to 1 kilojoule. 1 kilojoule. So, this can be written as 48 kilojoules also. Because in the previous lesson, we have been using the term or the unit kilojoule. You can just leave it at this as well. So, this is the amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature of 6 kilogram of copper by 20 Kelvin. This is the calculation. If you want, at the end of the calculation, you can write it in words. The heat required to increase the temperature of 6 kilogram of copper by 20 Kelvin equals 48,000 joules. Is that okay students? You can directly give the value in joules. So for a question like this, this is a direct calculation. You use the equation Q equals mc theta, substitute the values, you can simplify the units by cancelling them off and then you need to multiply the values and find the amount of heat. I am sure you can do that. So then I will move on to the next question. Find the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of 2 kilogram of water. So here mass is 2 kilogram and theta is 10 Kelvin, water by 10 Kelvin and the specific heat capacity is given to you as 4200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So we have all the values. So again we can say heat required, heat required that is Q equals mc theta. So to calculate Q we need to substitute m 2 kilogram into C 4200 joule per kilogram per Kelvin and theta 10 Kelvin. So again here you can simplify kilogram and kilogram minus 1, Kelvin minus 1 and Kelvin. So you get the values as 2 into 4200 into 10 joules. You can easily simplify this. So for 4200 4, into 10, 42,000 into 2, 84,000 joules. So 2 into 4200 into 10 joules that is equal to 84,000 joules. That is the amount of heat that is needed to or required to increase the temperature of 2 kilogram of water by 10 Kelvin. Is that okay students? So because the previous one was the first example, I wrote it in words. Here I am not going to do that. You all know what this means. The amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature of 2 kilogram of water by 10 Kelvin is 84,000 joules. Is that correct? Okay. So this is also a direct calculation. Why? Because all the values are given with the same units. Now mass is in kilograms, temperature is in kelvins and specific heat capacity is given to you. So directly you have to substitute and calculate the values. But if you get different units, then you will have to convert the unit to the required units. Now with that we will look at some more examples. 
the mass of a block of aluminium is 500 grams. So, as I told you, mass is equal to 500 grams. So, what you can do is students, immediately or directly you can convert the unit and then substitute the value or you can substitute it in the equation itself. So, if I do the conversion here, this has to be divided by 1000, then it will become 0 0.5 kilograms. Is that okay? So, then we have the, you, we have to find the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of the block from 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. So, what is theta? Always final temperature minus initial temperature. That is the change in temperature. So, 50 degrees Celsius minus 30 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius is theta. And they have given you the specific heat capacity of aluminium. That is C equals 900 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. So, here both are in degree Celsius. You don't have to change that. Then if you substitute the value, what is the equation? Heat required equals Q and Q equals mc theta. So, if we substitute the values there, what is m? We have already calculated as 0 0.5 kilograms into Specific heat capacity, 900 joule per kilogram per degrees Celsius. And what is theta? 20 degrees Celsius. So, here again, you can cancel off kilogram and kilogram minus 1, degrees Celsius minus 1 and degrees Celsius. So, if we try to multiply this, you can see 0 0.5 into 20 I will rearrange and write it so it's easy for us. So, you can if you like you can simplify the decimal and this or you can multiply 0 0.5 into 20 as 10 into 900. So, the amount of heat that is needed is going to be 9000 joules. Is that clear to you all students? So, that is the amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature of 500 grams of aluminium by or from 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. You can calculate the values, convert the unit, find the theta and substitute like this. Or else, if you all want to do it even more shorter, then this is the second method. It's not the second method, we are, this is the method where we do all the calculations together. So, we have the equation Q equals mc theta. So, directly you can substitute 500 divided by 1000 without doing the previous calculations for m. 500 divided by 1000. Then what is C? 900 joules per kilogram per degrees Celsius. And here, theta also you can directly calculate as 50 minus 30 degrees Celsius. Still, you will get the same value. So, this you can, it can be simplified. And kilogram, kilogram minus 1 degree Celsius, degree Celsius. So, you will get the value as 5 into 90 into 20. So, that again is equal to 9000 joules. Is this okay, student? So, the same thing earlier we calculated, we did the unit conversion, calculated theta and substituted the values. But here, I am doing all the calculations together. Is that okay, student? So, you get the same answer. Whatever is convenient for you all, you can use that method. So, with that, I will move on to the next question. The next question, if 20,000 joules of heat is transferred to 2 kilogram of copper at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, 
what is the final temperature. So here this is a slightly different question. The first two or the few uh, the questions that we did before there it was direct substitution. We had to find the quantity of heat. Only thing we had to do was do the unit change as well as calculate the temperature change. But here the heat is given to you. So here you know Q is equal to 20,000 joules. And you know the mass of copper that is 2 kilograms. And what else do you know? You know that the temperature of 30 degrees. So kilogram of copper at temperature of 30 degrees. So that means the initial temperature is given to you. Temperature is given to you. That is 30 degrees Celsius. They want you to find the final temperature. Final temperature. That is what we need to find. And the specific heat capacity of copper is given 400 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So here again we use the same equation students. You know that Q equals mc theta. But what we do is we have Q so 20,000 joules that is equal to m2 kilograms. And you know the specific heat capacity that is given to you 400 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius but we don't know theta. So here again we can find theta and then find final temperature or if you like you can directly write it as a calculation and find the value. But it would be easy if we just find the theta first and then find the final temperature. So here if we rearrange to find theta we need to rearrange the equation 20,000 joules divided by 2 kilogram into 400 400 joule per kilogram per degrees Celsius that is equal to theta. So here what you can do is you can simplify by cancelling of joules. Then we have kilogram and kilogram minus 1. So if we simplify it further, you can see you can cancel off these zeros and also 200 and 4 can be divided or you can divide 200 by 2. So this becomes 100. And 100 divided by 4, it becomes 25. 25 is what? Here you have degree Celsius minus 1. So when that goes up, it becomes degrees Celsius. So that is equal to theta. So theta is 25 degrees Celsius. But what is theta? Final temperature. minus initial temperature. So what are the values we know? We know theta 25 degrees Celsius and we know that the initial temperature that was given to you 30 degrees Celsius but we need to find the final temperature. So here final temperature so here students final temperature I will put it as T minus 30 degrees Celsius. So if you rearrange that 25 plus 30 degrees Celsius is equal to T. That is 55 degrees Celsius. So that means the final temperature equals 55 degrees Celsius. Is that okay student? So if I go back to the calculation again, from the question we know the heat that is needed is 20,000 joules, the mass of the substance is 2 kilograms and it says 2 kilogram of copper at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So you know that initial temperature is 30 degrees. 
what is the final temperature that is what we need to find so we need use the same equation q equals mc theta 20,000 joules is Q, M is 2 kilograms and C is 400 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. We need to find theta. So here again we substitute the values to 20,000 divided by 2 kilogram. We rearrange the equation into 400. So when you simplify joule and joule cancels off, kilogram and kilogram minus 1 cancels off, then we simplify the cancelling of the zeros then 200 divided by 200 100 divided by 4 is 25 and you get the unit as degree celsius so that is theta and theta is the change in temperature final temperature minus initial temperature that gives you the value as 55 degrees celsius if you all like students I'm sure you all are very good in maths. So if you like, I'm not going to do that method, but I will just write it here as a note. If you like, you can write the equation as Q equals mc theta. That is 20,000 joules equals m was equal to 2 kilogram. So here 2 kilogram into C 400 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius into if you want you can write it as T minus 30 degrees Celsius. Like that also you can do the calculation. So when you rearrange it will be equal to 20,000 divided by 2 into 400 that will be degree Celsius that is equal to T minus 30 degree Celsius. So here again we can simplify and you will get the same value 25 equals T minus 30. So directly you can find the value for T, 25 plus 30 that is equal to T. So that's 55 degrees Celsius, that's the final temperature. So you can do it this way also, is that clear to your students? So earlier we found theta and then we calculated the final temperature. Here instead of finding the theta you can write the values for theta t minus 30 final temperature minus initial temperature and directly find it as well both ways give you the same value same answer so either way is fine whatever is comfortable for you is that clear students so then i will move on to the next one a copper vessel contains one kilogram of water so here they have they are mentioning a vessel containing water. So here we need, we have a copper vessel like that and inside that there is water and that is equal to 1 kilogram. Mass of the vessel with water is 1.6 kilograms. So if you weigh the mass of the whole thing it is going to be 1.6 kilograms. So water plus vessel the mass is equal to 1.6 kilogram. So from this what can you calculate? You know the mass of water 1 kilogram. Water and vessel it's 1.6 kilogram. So you can find the mass of the vessel. So vessel only will be what? 1.6 minus 1 kilogram. So that is equal to 0 0.6 kilogram. You can find that. So then the temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius. So you know initial temperature equals 25 degrees Celsius. Find the amount of heat required to heat the water until it boils. So when we say until it boils, what is the final temperature? Final temperature is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Why? 
boiling point of water. So we know the mass of water, mass of the vessel, we know the initial temperature, we know the final temperature. Then to find the quantity of heat, what do we need? We need the specific heat capacity. But here students, they have given you the mass separately or they have given you the mass of water, then water plus the vessel and I showed you all how we can calculate and find the mass of vessel. So what does that mean? When you supply heat here, what will happen? Initially, the vessel will absorb heat. It will conduct the heat to water. Water will also absorb heat. But when you are supplying the heat, both the vessel and water will keep on absorbing heat. So that is the total quantity of heat that has to be supplied to this system. And the temperature will increase up to boiling point that is 100 degrees Celsius. So they want you to find the heat required. So here the heat required is the heat required to bring the water to 100 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the vessel also will be at 100 degrees Celsius or slightly higher. But we will assume that the temperature of the vessel is also 100 degrees Celsius. So that also would have absorbed a certain amount of heat. So the total heat is the heat absorbed by the vessel and the heat absorbed by water. So we have to find those separately. To do that, we need the specific heat capacity of water that is 4200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin and specific heat capacity of copper 400 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So if we do the calculation now. Heat absorbed by water, that is mc theta. So here, what is that? M, we calculated or they were, it was given as 1 kilogram. And specific heat capacity, 4200 joule per kilogram. kilogram per degrees Celsius and theta what is the theta value we need to bring it to boiling point so 100 and initial temperature was 25 so that is theta degrees Celsius if we try to simplify this again here kilogram kilogram minus 1 degree Celsius minus 1 degree Celsius. So you will get the so you will get the value as 4200 into 75 joules. Is that okay students? So if I simplify that I will do the calculation here 4200 into 75 so you will get it as 51 so when you add them together 5 11 315000 joules so you get the value as 315 so if I write that here 315,000 joules that is the amount of heat that is needed to increase the temperature of water only. So we need to calculate the heat absorbed by the copper vessel. So there are heat absorbed by the copper vessel that is again equal to if you remember we calculate the mass as 0 0.6 kilograms why 1.6 kilograms for water and vessel water only 1 kilogram so it was 0 0.6 kilograms 
and if you look at the specific heat capacity i'm sure you all can remember students but just to check 400 joule per kilogram per kelvin because these are values that you don't need to memorize you have to look at the question and substitute the values so 400 joules per kilogram per degrees celsius and already we have calculated the theta as 75 degrees celsius so if we simplify again kilogram kilogram degree celsius degree celsius so you get the values as you can even simplify this and this 6 into 40 into 75 that will be joules so 6 into 40 240 into 75 joules so again i will do the calculation 240 into 75 so 0 20 12 then if we have 28 14 16 so you will get the value as 18,000 joules so here you get the value as 18,000 joules. So that is the amount of heat absorbed by the copper vessel. So what is the total amount of heat that is required? You need to add these two values together. So amount of heat, of heat required to bring 1 kilogram of water in the copper vessel to boiling is equal to heat absorbed by water plus heat absorbed by the vessel. So that is equal to, we found the values as 315,000 plus 18,000 joules. So that is equal to 333,000 joules. Is that okay students? So when they tell you about the vessel and the liquid inside and ask you to calculate the heat required you have to remember you need to calculate the heat absorbed by the liquid as well as the vessel separately because they have different specific heat capacities. But the theta will be the same. Change in temperature will be the same value for both. And then you have to add the two values. Is that clear students? So students, we'll just go back and look at the calculations. So we use the same equation for both the calculations. You calculate the heat absorbed by water. So there the specific heat capacity of water has to be used 4200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. Theta that is change in temperature 100 minus 25 by 100 is the boiling point of water. We use the same value for theta there that is 75 degree Celsius. So we assume the copper vessel also comes to the boiling point of water that's 100 degrees celsius but here the difference is we use the specific heat capacity of copper and the mass of copper is also different from the mass of water that is why we calculate them separately especially because of the difference in specific heat capacity so here you can see the heat absorbed by these two even though the final temperature is the same the heat absorbed are different. So the total amount of heat that is needed is the sum of the heat absorbed by water and the heat absorbed by the vessel. 
So the amount of heat, the amount of heat required to, to bring 1 kilogram of water in the copper vessel to boiling that is equal to the heat absorbed by water and the heat absorbed by the vessel. So you add them and you get the value as 333,000 joules. So I am sure you can do a similar calculation like this. With that, I will move on to the next question. Uh, we have finished the examples given in the textbook. We have the exercise now. So before I start with the exercise students, now you all know the same equation. Q equals mc theta. Q is the quantity of heat. M is the mass of the substance. It has to be in kilograms. Spe C is specific heat capacity, joule per kilogram per Kelvin or joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. And theta is the temperature. Always final temperature minus initial temperature. So there again it can be in degrees Celsius or Kelvins. It doesn't matter because when it comes to changes or differences in temperature, degrees Celsius and Kelvins are the same. But when you write the same unit, it's easy for you to cancel off the units and get the final unit. Is that clear to you? So they can give you the all the values for mc theta and ask you to find heat or they can give you the heat and ask you to find the uh, change in temperature even they can ask you to find the specific heat capacity but you still have to use the same equation and when it comes to the vessel and the liquid there you have to calculate the heat absorbed separately and add them together. So with that, there are other questions in the exercise. Again, students, you all can try that first and then you can listen to my discussion. The first question, specific heat capacity of iron is 460. So here we are discussing about iron. Specific heat capacity is given 460 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Here again students you don't have to rewrite the values but when you write it you get the idea. So then it's easy for you all to do the calculation. That's why I am writing it again. Find the quantity of heat required. So we need to find Q that's easy required to increase the temperature of 2 kilograms. So mass is 2 kilogram of iron at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius up to 65 degrees Celsius. So here also you can calculate the theta and substitute or you can substitute it in the equation itself. So I will show the calculation 65 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius that is the theta change in temperature final minus initial. So you need to find the heat that is Q equals mc theta. So what is m? You have the value here 2 kilogram. And what is c? 460 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Here the unit is Kelvin. So what do we write here? You can find the value and write it or you can write it as 65 minus 25 but we will use the unit Kelvin so that we can simply cancel it off. Degree Celsius and Kelvins same when it comes to difference. So kilogram, kilogram minus 1, Kelvin, Kelvin. You have the values as 2 into 460 into 65 minus 25, 40 degrees Celsius. So if we calculate the value there. So 2 into 40, 80 into 460. If we simplify that, again students you all know even in your exam paper you can show the working on the side. So here 460 into 80. you will get the value as 36,800. That is equal to 36,000 
800 joules. Is that okay, student? 80 into 460. That is the amount of heat that is required to increase the temperature of 2 kilogram of iron from 25 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. So with that students, I am sure you also got the same answer, the correct answer. With that, I will move on to the next question. The second question, find the temperature of 0.8 kilogram of aluminium. So here we have aluminium, mass is given to you 0.8 kilogram at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So initial temperature 30 degrees Celsius when 40,400 joules of heat is transferred to it. So here Q is given to you 14,400 joule of heat. And specific heat capacity of aluminium is given 900 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So again the same equation. You use Q equals mc theta. But here you are given the value for Q 14,400 joules. And m is given as 0 0.8 kilogram and c 900 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. And here we need to find theta. So as I told you before, you can find theta and get the final temperature or you can directly substitute the value as T minus 30 if taking T as the final temperature. So then if we rearrange this equation, you can see 14,400 joules divided by 0 0.8 kilograms into 900 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. That is equal to theta. So if you simplify the unit, joules and joules cancels of kilogram, kilogram minus 1. So we have 14,400 and he also, the decimals can be simplified 8 into 90 and the unit will be kelvins. That's equal to theta. So here we can again simplify. So we can further simplify this by dividing it by 2. So 4, 360 and 2 that also can be simplified 180 so 180 and 9 you know it has to be 20. So the change in temperature is 20 degrees or 20 Kelvin. Then we can find the change in temperature or increase in temperature you know that initial temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So theta equals 20, you can take it as degree Celsius or Kelvin, that is equal to final temperature minus initial temperature so that is equal to T minus 30 degrees Celsius. So therefore 20 plus 30 degrees Celsius is T and that is equal to 50 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. I am sure you also got the same value. Let me go back and check the calculation. So we were given the mass, the initial temperature, the heat required and the specific heat capacity. Use the equation Q equals mc theta 14,400 joules equals 0.8 kilogram into 900 joule per kilogram per Kelvin into theta. So when we simplify, we need to rearrange the equation first 14,400 joules divided by 0.8 kilogram into 900 joules into per kilogram per Kelvin. So you can cancel off joules and kilograms 
then if you take 0 point and the 900 0 you can cancel those off and after that I have simplified from 0 0.8 into 9 I have again written the values here you can see 14,400 divided by 18 to 90. So when you are simplifying you can see you can cancel off the zeros then you can see 8 and 14,400 we can simplify it by 4 or directly you can divide it by 8 you get the value as 180 and 180 and 9 when you simplify you get the answer as 20. So 20 degrees Celsius or 20 kelvins is the theta. Then theta is equal to final temperature minus initial temperature. So T minus 30 degrees. So therefore you get the final temperature as 50 degrees Celsius. So I am sure you all also did it correctly. With that I will move on to the next question. The mass of a glass vessel is 500 grams. It contains 400 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius temperature. So then when you read the question you all know you have to calculate for the vessel and the water inside it. Find the quantity of heat required to boil the water. Specific heat capacity of glass is given. Specific heat capacity of water is given to you. So then what do we do? We use the equation Q equals mc theta. So heat absorbed by, by water. What is that equal to? mc theta we need to substitute mass. The mass of glass vessel is 500 grams, water is 400 grams. So here it is given in grams. So what do we need to do students? We need to convert it to kilograms. Either you can do it before and substitute the value here or you can show the conversion here. You have to divide by 1000 but you have to do this unit conversion. That is why I always write the unit so you don't forget. Even if you forget when you get a gram here and a kilogram there then you know you have to convert it. So it's more convenient. So 400 divided by 1000 and for water specific heat capacity 4200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius and then theta. So we need to find theta. Theta is what you can see there boil the water. So when they say boil the water it's 100 degrees Celsius. So here again 100 minus 25 is the initial temperature degrees Celsius. So there if we simplify again here I can cancel off the zeros kilogram kilogram minus 1 degree Celsius degree Celsius there and another zero there. So 4 into 420 into 75 joules. That is the amount of heat. So this also I can show you the working. 420 into 4 that is going to be 8 and 16. So 1680 I can multiply by that by 75 or you can first multiply by 75 and then by 4. Zero. Eight thousand four hundred. Then when you multiply by seven, fifty six. So six. We have five forty two and five forty seven. Seven and four eleven. So if I add that together, ten, sixteen, and twelve. So we get the answer as hundred and twenty six thousand. So that is equal to hundred and twenty six thousand joules. So that is the heat absorbed by water. Then what do we do? We need to calculate the heat absorbed by the vessel. So here you can see mass of the glass vessel is given to you as 500 grams and 
the specific heat capacity 840. So we need to use those values. So I can say heat, heat absorbed by the vessel that is again equal to mc theta mass is 500 grams so we need to divide that by 1000 in order to get kilograms 840 is the specific heat capacity joules per kilogram per degree celsius and the temperature change we have already calculated as 75 degrees celsius so if i simplify these kilogram and kilogram degree celsius and degree celsius so here you can see 5 and 10 2 and this also can be simplified 420 so you need to multiply 420 by 75 that is the amount of joules so that also i can do the working here 420 into 75 so 0, 0, 0,0021 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so that's going to be 31,500 joules so what do we, do we need to do now we need to add the two values so the heat required heat required or you can say total heat that is equal to earlier we got the value 126,000 joules and now here 31,500 joules so if you add them together if you Add them together, 0, 0, 500, then we have 7, 5 and 1, 157,500 joules. So that is the amount of heat that is needed to boil the water that is present inside the glass vessel. If we go back and check the question and the calculation, you can see students the mass of glass vessel is 500 grams water is 400 grams they have said find the quantity of heat required to boil the water so that's 100 degrees celsius and the initial temperature was given as 25 degrees celsius so heat absorbed by water 400 divided by 1000 into 4200 and theta 100 minus 25 so when you simplify you get the value as 126000 joules the same way if we calculate the heat absorbed by the vessel here you can see the way mass of the vessel is 500 so 500 divided by 1000 kilograms and the specific heat capacity is 840 and theta we have already found as 75 degrees celsius so the heat absorbed is equal to 31500 then if we add the two values 120,000 joules and 31,500 joules you get the answer as 157,500 joules that is the total amount of heat that is needed to bring the water to the boiling point but not to completely boil the water off it's only to bring it up to boiling point why we calculated the theta the final temperature as 100 degrees celsius so the theta was 100 minus 25 75 degrees celsius so with that students i have completed this chapter in this chapter we discuss what specific heat capacity and heat heat capacity of substances are you all know heat capacity is given the symbol capital c specific heat capacity is given the simple symbol simple c and the relationship is 
heat capacity equals mass into specific heat capacity. And to calculate the quantity of heat, we have the equation Q equals mc theta. Q is the quantity of heat, m is the mass of the substance, c is the specific heat capacity of the substance and theta is the change in temperature. Under that equation, we have done many examples. So I am sure you all can understand that clearly. So with that, I am going to complete this chapter. So in the next chapter, I will be discussing how states of matter changes. You all know that matter exists in physical states and how the states change when we supply heat to different substances.